Welcome everyone to the men's room. Myself, Adi Oladipo, the great Roy Jennings, and we're joined by pro boxer Chef Clark, unbeaten pro boxer as well. Let's give him his correct title. The biggest stage I ever boxed on. Embarrass myself. <laughs> Embarrass myself. Yeah. Like, I didn't perform bad, but I lost. So I stopped boxing and then I started low driving. Low driving for two years. Two years? Yeah. yeah. Throughout the time, my friends, they just nagged me. You're a waste of space. You're a waste of time. Waste of talent. I was like, listen, man. Okay, cool. I'll fight. I feel like I haven't seen you for ages. You haven't? Rory Jennings. You've been avoiding me. It's been like two weeks, but it feels like a lot longer, doesn't it? It's the longest it's been since I knew you. Two and a half years. You've been having withdrawal symptoms. I have. I've missed you <laughs> tremendously, but it's good to have you back as well. And, it's, and we're joined by pro boxer Chef Clark, unbeaten pro boxer as well. Let's give him his correct title. Uh, great amateur record. Now you switched over to the pros. Big win on the weekend as well. Takes you to 4-0, and oh, four knockouts. And you don't waste time. I've noticed with you as well, you don't get paid for overtime, do you? <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. Um... How quick we talking? Hang on, I don't know the I don't know the backstory here. What are you saying, Addy? Chef went in there and decided like he obviously wants to go home quickly. Okay. Chef went in there. Go on, Chef. Let tell me, story. Let me break it down for you. So there's a guy that um, one of my coaches called Obed. Now Obed doesn't like coming out of Peckham, <laughs> so when we leave Peckham, I have to make sure he gets back quickly. So you know that, <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason behind it. So how, how long? When did the knockout take place? Uh, th- uh, second round. Second. Second yeah. round. Second yeah, round. That's double quick. No, but it was such an impressive performance as well. Like I, I've been lucky enough to work on all of Chef's fights. And every time you see him after a fight, always angry. Always angry, upset about his performance. Oh, he, he hit me. I'm like, you're in a boxing <laughs> ring, Chef. Someone's going to hit you. Oh, no, he hit me. And I'm like, but this performance, I think, was his best because the opponent was a lot higher as well. This is a good opponent that's fought other good, uh, good people. And Chef landed an uppercut. And the guy was knocked out, but on his feet. Yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, 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 knocked yeah, out, yeah, but on yeah, his feet. Yeah. Like, like, honestly, just not yeah. moving. It's when they fall really dangerously. Yeah. But Chev then, I was like, go on, land one more. And Chev could have, but decided to like, just oh, call. And, honorable. Like, honorable. 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 Did you know it was over? Yeah. As a, as a fighter, you know when you hit somebody, you hit them clean. I don't, I don't see the point of carrying on hitting somebody because at the end of the day, that's somebody's son, somebody's dad. Somebody's Are you thinking son. that? And you're actually thinking that because in my, some people yeah. say it's dog eat dog kill will be killed. You're it's thinking that. Though. Killed already, isn't it? Yeah. It's done. It's true. Yeah, it's yeah. done. Like it's, it's, done. it's like if you're having a fight, if you're having an altercation and somebody's on the floor, you wouldn't. Continue. Well, I wouldn't. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's yeah. the, it's the same principle for me. Like it's this. a very noble sport boxing, isn't it? It's it's funny because it's got such a, it's so violent, violent. Mm. and yet there are so many honourable rules that it stems like all that Kingsbury stuff. Like it stems from tradition and being being very respectful of one another is that doesn't it i agree yeah but yeah. considering that it's so violent it's, it's weird that those two worlds mirror up it, it's beautiful violence and it's like anything once you know you can do something you don't need to show off about it yeah mm. do you get what i mean yeah. so like the man's already and i injured. guess there is that respect right you know how difficult it is to get in the ring and do what you do mm-hmm. so there's a respect that okay he's done the same thing mm. Or well, she's done the same thing exactly. So you can show respect. Uh, big plans for twenty twenty three. What, what are, we, are we looking at? An area title, English title. What's the plan? Listen, anything those guys call at me, mm. I'm up for it. Um, You're in a tough division. Cruiserweight's a big division. It, it, it's the land is. of the giants. <laughs> <laughs> land of the giants. <laughs> Every cruiserweight's like six four, six five. They're really? big. Um, six foot. Yeah. Five eleven. Six Six foot. I'm not yeah, claiming six foot. Six foot. Six, foot. six, foot. six foot. By that six foot logic, I'm five foot ten. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, uh, good luck with 2023. Uh, no doubt it's going to prove good for you. Um, good amateur background. You're showing now that you can handle yourself in the pros. And I think it's going to be a good year. So good luck to it. I, I want to talk about your, your physical health. Obviously, look, you're in great shape, right? You always look in great shape, right? Abs and triceps and biceps. Physically, <clears throat> aside from boxing, how do you keep yourself in shape? Are you, are you in the gym sort of four or five times a week? Um, when I'm in camp, yeah, mm. most definitely. Um, when I'm not in camp, we relax a little bit. But I'm always, as a kid, I was always active. Yeah. I just love being out and, you know, whether it was running around, climbing trees and all that. But now, you know, it's a little bit more formal in terms of going to the gym, doing um, training, etc. But yeah, always doing something um, to help because not only physically, but it helps me mentally. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting because I, I think you're the same as well. Like Rory always says, he's got to do football a couple mm. of days a week. Like you have to. Oh, yeah, it's the anchor. It's, it's the it's, anchor. It's the it? anchor yeah. yeah, whatever else is going on, I'll always make sure I have a, at least one game of football a week just to sort of reset. And whatever else has gone on, however busy you are, it's it's that one time where 
I can strictly think about only playing football. Like, you know, you know, even now, right? Right now, I could be having this conversation, finding it really interesting, but thinking, dear God, I got a tax bill, or like something else going on. Whereas when I play football, it's the one time that I can just sort of focus and forget every other responsibility mm. I have and just play football. You're, you're so right. I mean, um, when I was young, I used to play football. That, that was my thing. Like, football was my first love. Um, I fell into boxing, but football was my first love. And when you're on the pitch or when it, whether you're in the ring, nothing else in the world matters. In that moment, mm. nothing else in the world matters. And it's so beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice release, isn't it? But I guess with boxers, though, it's different, right? Because you've got fight camps mm -hmm. where I'm guessing you are fully focused, right? Th that six-week or eight-week fight camp is... But what... What outside of the fight camp though? How is it different outside of the fight camp? Are you still fully focused, or is it a bit more, bit more relaxed, a bit more chilled? Um, you're always focused because whether it be training in the camp, when you're out of it, you've still got to be disciplined in terms of what you eat mm. and making sure you're getting the right nutrients, etc. But when you're fully training, it's just well for me anyway. It's it's fully focusing and making sure you're. You're, you're doing the right disciplines, mm. getting the right techniques in, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, it's, it's always focus, fully, fully on focus. When you're outside, though, you can do other things. Like, I used to love playing football to take your mind off of it. Mm. Because if you're just boxing, boxing, boxing all the time, it gets boring. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not good for you. You need to take your mind away to then when you come back, you're sharp. You're like, okay, boom, 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 I've done this. Mm -hmm. you know can I mean? you do that now, though? Or is it presumably you can't risk injuries from playing football? No, I can't. Which, which, so then I have to find something else to do. What is your other thing? Like, how do you switch off from boxing? Do you switch off? I do. Um... I like, um, I'm actually a geek. <laughs> it's cool to be a geek, right? I'm, I'm, I'm putting it out there. But no, I like um, numbers. Mm. So I've, um, while I was on my time at Team GB, um, GB Boxing, I started reading financial literacy books. And I started getting into that, researching the Warren Buffett's. Really? Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. I read, I read all his books, bro. And I know um, <laughs> I'm so much of a geek. Yeah. So I've created an algorithm that helps me find companies to research and invest into. So there's certain things I'll be looking for when I'm looking to invest into a company and the algorithm helps me find these things, then I go and do more research. This is an amazing twist. I didn't expect this. So so boxing is is the priority, but you've also got sort of a side interest, a side hustle of investment. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Because... Warren I think, Buffett. I can't believe that Warren Buffett has come up in this conversation. I never expected this to go this way. Warren Buffett, Peter That's Lynch, amazing. Peter Lynch, Manish Prabhu, right? really? all them guys read all their books. Gosh, and is that done with? Are you thinking already about I post boxing? Think, yeah. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's interesting because they always say when you've got that, it, even a toe out of boxing, it's a dangerous thing. Right? That, that's what they say, whether or not it's true or not. But they say once you're not one hundred percent thinking of boxing, you've got a toe out of it. It's almost like oh. Uh, you know, like sensible that, sounds to me, Ali. I think, I think sounds it's sensible. very sensible. Well, you see, all the footballers, they've all got side side industries now. Uh, all of the footballers, like, you've got you've got this geezer's doing a campaign for whatever clothing brand. This geezer created Jesse his Lingard's own clothing brand. Jesse Lingard's doing it? his own thing. I yeah. think you've got to have other interests and other things. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, as I said, that developed while I was on um, GB Boxing, and it's just gone on and on. But, um, you know, we've seen a history with predominantly boxers. They've made so much money and then Squandered. at the end of their career, yeah. they're yeah. broke. Mm. So, like, if I've seen all of that and I go and do the same thing, that would make me double silly, wouldn't it? D does it help your mental health? Because I always feel like with you guys at Team GB, especially because you're talking the crop, the creme de la creme, right? You're, you're top. Mm -hmm. You look at Team GB that went to the Olympics and how successful it was. Does it help your mental state that you can do that and then switch off? Because I feel like with what you do right now, mm -hmm. It's so focused and so geared to best nutrition, best athletes. You've got to do your social media. You've got to do this. You've got to do that. Can you then just switch off? And does it help you switch off when you do your stuff that you're doing? Yeah, most definitely. And um, again, I, I refer back to while I was on the program, we was training three times a day. So you'd be what, What's the program? What do you mean the program? On Team GB. Boxing, okay. Yeah. So you get up seven o'clock, you weigh in, 7.30 on the track. You do your session. You go back, eat breakfast, have a little rest. 10... 10.30, 11.30, next session, go back, eat. Really? Then you go back, you do your third session, most likely sparring or depending on what day it is, um, weight training. And then your evening, you rest. Some people would go out and eat. And then I just managed to come across it. And um, mm. 
I read, you know. So is it that regimented? When you're in camp like that, mm-hmm. it's it's that structured every day. That's it. And are they, in terms of the food that you eat, are they sorting that out? Is it all very scripted? I mean, there's a nutritionist. I'm, I've always been good with my nutrition, so I never needed him. But yeah, some people use him. I didn't realise that it was so, so I diligent. I guess that's why they're so successful. It's the best That's program. why they are, you know, up there with, I guess they passed the States trying to catch Cuba. That's yeah. what it is, right? By far the best, one of the best programmes in the world. Really? And in terms of people coming out of it and going on to successful careers, are, they, are we, we churning them out through that? Yeah, I, I, I think so. You look yeah. at some of the guys that are coming out now and some of the girls that are coming out now as well, Olympic gold medalists that everyone's expecting to go on and dominate. Yeah. But that's where, that's, that's my point. That's where the pressure comes because now everyone's expecting like when we were commentating on your fight on the weekend and everyone's like, okay, they need to fast track Chev. Mm-hmm. They need to fast track Pat McCormack. They need to fast track your fight. Like, do you, how do you sort of handle that pressure of everyone now expects you to go on and not just win area titles and like, it'd almost be a failure if you don't go on. When you say fast track, Ad, what do you mean? Do you mean like Chev gets thrown into f- like misses a good, like, yeah. Misses so, someone the English level and go straight international level. That's what they want from all these guys. That so someone's, you see, you're suddenly in there with somebody who's mustard. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Or mustard, as you would say. <laughs> and is that what you're up for? Like, would you, do you fancy that? Yeah, because I thought the best in the world. I'm not being funny, but the way I see it, and, and I, I don't know if it's fact, but I'd say the Olympic level boxers are better than most of 70%, 80% of professional boxers. Like these guys, the guys are, are unbelievable. Like the only difference is we only box for three rounds mm. yeah, as, yeah, an, yeah. as an Olympic athlete. But then when you turn it over to the pro, if you just adjust the training to go the, the longer rounds, it, it'd be easy. Like if the Cubans were able to turn over, it'd you think be amazing be to up, see yeah. what... I don't know if they'd clean up because us man, they yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're scary. But, but they, they, they are, they are good. Scary, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. What's it been like for you that switch from sort of Team GB, as you say, where it's been so structured, mm-hmm. and it's been everything's almost been like, not written down for you, but as you said, you wake up, you do this, you go track. What's it been like now as a pro? Where are, are you handling it yourself? Do you have a team behind you that makes it as structured as well, or, or is it similar? It, um, I've adapted it. So you, the difference is when you're on GB boxing, you're an athlete and it's a sport. Now it's a business. Mm. So you're the CEO. The, is that yeah, 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 yeah. You're the CEO. AJ said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're the CEO. So you've got to plan everything and employ the right people to to make sure your ship runs as smooth as possible. And I've adapted the same or as close as I can to what I had at GB. Okay. Because if it works, if it's successful, I might as well adapt it. But I guess there's more than that now, right? I mean, with Team GB, it doesn't matter how many social media followers you have. Mm-hmm. doesn't matter how many bums on seats. None, none of that counts as an amateur. As exactly. a pro, you've got to have the social media following now, unfortunately. You've got to put bums on seats. Some might even say you've got to be controversial. We were just talking off air about Dillian White and his fight recently. That must add a, added extra pressure, no? knowing that now you've got to be more than just a good boxer. Being a good boxer isn't really going to put bums on seats. That is true. Um, but with me personally, I'll just always be myself. Mm. I'll never ever do something just because that person thinks it's cool, this person thinks it's cool. Is but that sh- a dangerous strategy, do you think? Because <coughs> some sports are a complete meritocracy. If you're, the, For example, if you're the best footballer in the world... Mm-hmm. You will be a household name, a, a, yeah. a millionaire. You will play for whoever if you are the best footballer in the world. Whereas I think that you can get a situation with boxing where potentially the the best fighter doesn't get the biggest fight. Like Logan Paul, for example, isn't the biggest, isn't the best boxer, mm-hmm. but he's arguably going to have some of the biggest fights. No, I, I think you're right. And um, would you play that game at all? Do you try? Do you realize? Do you think that it's relevant? I think people, if you're good at it, do it. Yeah. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. it's like when people say, "Oh, these YouTube boxes, blah 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 blah." Like, I I understand it, but I understand that it's a business as well, and I do understand that if those people, if you had twenty five million people following you, and you could get twenty thousand of them on a seat, and just by boxing, you would do it, wouldn't you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's just about being realistic, and also knowing that okay, listen, I'm good at this, so I can do this or not. Do you know what I mean? I'll post, I'll never post, I'll never sit there for ages, think oh, I've got to post this or try and make something fake. Whatever I do is always authentic. So if you see me post it, it's all authentic. I don't pretend to you do it. You won't that. amplify it though? No. And what and about I, I, presses? Would you do it in a presser? No. 
Yeah. I'm just myself. I'll, I'll, I'll forever be Chev. I'll it, never it, change. It's funny though, because some fighters are like that. You go back and some fighters, it was just themselves that sold themselves. Nigel Ben never tried to do anything. It's just him. Yeah. Mike Tyson. And that, I was going to get just him, like, wasn't it? It's just like him. Mike, like, <clears> like, yeah. I'll, never, I'll never be a Mike Tyson. To this day, people are still quoting Mike Tyson things. Whether it was and controversial, very, very authentic. Yeah. You know, Everyone's got authentic. a plan until you get punched in the face. Exactly. Do you <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? So I'm just being, I'm just being me. If you like me, you'll like me. Um, I, I prefer that people like me and come mm. and support me. But why should I be a fraud um, mm. for you to come and watch me? Indeed. Exactly. Chef, on this journey from obviously, look, you came from Jamaica at what ten? Uh, yeah, 10, 11. 10, 11. This journey to where you are now as, as a as a pro boxer. Mm -hmm. You must have had some big ups and downs. Like I speak to a lot of boxers and a lot of them are like stopped boxing, right? They didn't understand the pathways. Maybe those issues with Team GB. I speak to a lot of boxers who say Team GB has its favourites. Talk to us mentally about some of your, your journeys, ups and downs to where, to get to where you are now. Um, there's been plenty. Yeah. And, um, I think that's what makes people successful. For me, it was when I first started boxing, um, I had trials in 2011, 12 on, to go on to GB. I got to the last three. They didn't choose me. You need to be last two to, to get onto the team. Yeah. I didn't get chosen. I went home. I was disappointed. I told my coach, I'm not boxing again. He then goes, oh, you're Jamaican. I said, yeah. He goes, okay, no problem. Two weeks later, he calls me. Go, we're going to Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> I paid for it. Got me sponsored. We went to Jamaica. I fought in the championships. Then I qualified to fight for Jamaica in the Commonwealth, Commonwealth. Games. 2014, Glasgow, Commonwealth Games, first fight, lost. Disappointed. The biggest stage, imagine, the biggest stage yeah. I ever boxed on, embarrassed myself. <laughs> embarrassed myself. Yeah. Like, I didn't perform bad, but I lost. So to me, it was embarrassing. And then I had to go back home and face all my friends. I thought it was just a nightmare. So I stopped boxing. And then I started low driving. Low driver for two years. You stopped really? boxing for two years? Yeah, yeah. Didn't know that. Were you then training my, still? Were you still? No. no. Throughout the time, my friends, they just nagged me you're a waste of space. You're a waste of time. Waste of talent. I was like, listen, man. Okay, cool. I'll fight. And then in 2016, I, I, I finally gave up. I was like, okay, I'll have one more fight. Mm. Uh, came back, had a fight. And then at the end of it, I thought I was going to go back to my lorry drive and my coach goes, oh, you know the championships are in uh, two weeks. Make sure you're ready. I was like, oh. Had the championships. And I'd never won the open ABAs, the elite ABAs. I don't, one day on the 10 fights, on the 20 fights, Never won the open ABAs. And I fought Chris Bill and Smith in the final. Okay. And I beat Chris Bill and Smith in the final. Then um, He's a I'm, very good cruiserweight right now. Mate, your coach is a hero. He's yeah, kept yeah. believing in you. All the times where you've yeah. said no, he's kept on. Yeah. My, my friends, are my friends predominantly. Mm. But then the next year, no, sorry, I got into, uh, got trials for GB Boxing. I got onto the team. Um, just went from there. Then I, I, my first year on the team, I went to my first tournament, right? Got to the final of the tournament, fought the Olympic champion from 2016. And uh, I beat him, but they didn't give it to me. Yeah. I, know, I know you guys did. Can I tell you my... <laughs> yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. Boiling. It's always, it's the lights in here, isn't it? Always, always. Hey, oh, no, show? put it back on. I didn't know that was under there. Arsenal, oh, put, it, put it back on. on. No, 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 no. You, you thought it was a Listen, Jamaican top, didn't you? Put the top back on, yeah. Top yeah. Top top league. We're top of the league in that, man. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so... You know, first year was good. Then I got selected to go to the European Championships. European Championships, again, fight him in the final. That was that was closer. Um, but yeah, my time on, on, on GB just went from there. And then I obviously just went on and on. Went to the Commonwealth Games mm. in, in uh, the Gold Coast, Australia. Uh, got bronze there. And then just went from there. Do you, um, boxers, like a lot of sports stars now talk about therapy, right? They, they, they speak to people. It's actually quite a, a normal thing now for footballers to actually speak to people. I was watching an interview with Gary Neville and Virgil van Dijk and he said, like, I speak to someone on a regular. Mm -hmm. Do boxers speak to people? Do they, is that even a thing? Because it's like a tough man sport, right? Is it even a thing to want to speak to someone if things aren't going well? You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be honest here. So um, <laughs> on Team GB, you have a psychologist. Right, and her job is to make sure everybody's all right. There's no pressure on you to speak to her or him. And um, from the whole time I was there, this lady tried to speak to me. I weren't having none of it. <laughs> I'm cool. <Yeah>. I'd go. <laughs> this is what would happen. We go into the. We go. Oh, show you coming to talk today for an hour. We meant to talk. Go in. We start talking. I'll answer a couple of questions. 
Oh, you're right, blah, blah, blah. Then I'd start interviewing her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, how's your life going? How's things going? Everything good with your husband? You know what I mean? <laughs> For five years, bro. But then the last year, I had a little bit of stuff going on at home and it was a bit mad. But then I did did speak to her. Do you know what I mean? And it's good to speak to people. Like, y- you might not... There's always somebody you can speak to. Do you know what I mean? You might feel like, oh, I can't speak to that person or I can't speak to this. But there's always somebody, mm. somebody out there. And there's always that moment, right? Because you were, as you say, she was there for five years. Mm-hmm. Mm. And for five years, you were like, yeah, I don't really need this. But that one time where you did need it, mm. she was there. It's, it's a safe, safety net. It's a safety net, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, knowing, yeah. No, also, I think sometimes, even if you don't want to speak, just knowing that there is somebody you can speak to is enough. Yes. You know, if that person didn't exist, if that person wasn't there for you, mm. you may at some point in that five years have thought, I could really do with a chat, but just knowing that you can have a chat sometimes means that you don't need to enforce it. Hundred percent. It's nice to know that there's a lot of support at Team GB like that. It's nice to know that there is that, and it just they shows you, doesn't every it? Single box. Hey, if it's they? there, if it's there for You're people using. that have opted into the, the people that they are catering for, there, it's like hard men. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like geezers yeah. that can, women, yeah. geezers women, that yeah, can yeah. have some. <laughs> like, like if they're, yeah, if they they're the hardest me, of the hardest yeah, yeah, it's pro- and if they need it yeah. or if they feel like it's there for them then it's there for them and when you needed it it was very supportive when you that yeah. that final year yeah yeah very, like honestly um, the guys up there are amazing man the amount of support I got like not just for boxing this is this is the good thing about it it's not just boxing because you're boxing or you need help for boxing anything in your life that is going on they, they have a resource for it and they will help you out of it. Before you wrap, um, one thing that you'll change about boxing, what would you change if you had that power? If you're like the world governing body, what would you change about the sport? Two things. Oh, two, okay. Sweet Caroline. Yeah, Get rid of it. Yeah. Get rid of it. <laughs> nah, I'm that. Nah, I'm oh. nah, um, I'd make sure there is some form of governing body that protects the athlete coming into boxing. Mm. Like the PFA. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And then also, I would make sure that all promoters... Um, Eddie, are you listening? <laughs> all promoters, there's, there's a, like a pension system. Mm. So whenever the athlete fights... 10%, whatever 5%, they, whatever. Yeah, whatever they make, the pension takes 5 10% yeah, yeah. of all their fights. And then when they finish, they get yeah, that. They get the lump. Yeah, because it's, it's awful to see fighters coming towards the end and having to then chase that fight, that yeah. big money fight, when they're clearly yeah, yeah. not ready to fight, exactly. but they need that one last paycheck, right? And you see it and you see it. Dangerous, and they say boxing it? retires fighters rather than fighters retiring from yeah. boxing. No, Shep, really appreciate it, brother. Thank, thank you so much for joining you. us here on the men's room. Rory, as always. I loved it. Thank you for so one, much right? for coming on, mate. Appreciate you guys. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning into this, I want to call it a special episode with Chev Clark. Um, fantastic boxer. Make sure you go and check him out on your social medias. Make sure you download this episode as well, wherever you download your episodes from. And make sure, if you like me, that you like watching episodes, go to YouTube's, sorry, Talk Sports YouTube channel where you can watch this one as well. 